Good riddance to that Duke knockoff, Duncan exclaimed the next morning. I tell you what, he made himself out to be quite a celebrity. He's nothing of the sort. You will never stop complaining, will you? grumbled Reneus. Why can't you accept that something nice has happened for once? Nice? snapped Duncan. You call some engine pretending to be a ghost in our mind nice? Puh! If you'll ask me, the museum's welcome to him. Reneus scowled. Ever since Bertram had been on the railway, Duncan had complained bitterly. If it wasn't Sir Handel being sent away, it had been about Bertram. Nothing seemed to be right for Duncan these days, and the little engines were getting tired of it. During the summer season, Rusty, the little diesel, would help out with deliveries to a new quarry not far away. He would occasionally meet engines at the Fat Controller's Railway, and they exchanged their news of how things were going. When Rusty told Thomas and Percy all about Bertram, they were surprised. I thought he was just a ghost story, spluttered Thomas. I guess I owe Toby an apology. That's as may be, said Rusty, but no harm was done. I just wish Duncan would stop being so bitter. Ever since Bertram left, he's done nothing but complain. Something obviously makes him tick, said Percy, and I like to find out what it is. Don't we all, said Rusty. I just wish Duncan would open up every once in a while, instead of bottling it all in. Little did Rusty realise that the chance of getting Duncan to confess why he always complained was to come sooner than expected. Before long, autumn came to the narrow gauge railway. But during that time, Duncan's attitude still didn't improve. He and Peter Sam were in charge of the first train of collecting leaves and broken branches. They had to cross an old iron bridge, which had recently reopened for the summer. I tell you what, Duncan scowled as they puffed along. It's always been, oh look at Bertram, isn't he smart? Or, oh dear, has anyone seen Sandor lately? Or, oh no, Duke's done a runner. And then there was trouble. There was a loud bang. The train slowed right in the middle of the old iron bridge. Steam leaked everywhere from Peter Sam, which made Duncan cross. And to make matters worse, Duncan exclaimed, and the one they call Stuart has suddenly taken a leak. I tell you what, you engines are disgraceful. I do all the hard work around here. And That's enough! Do you think you are telling us all what to do, thinking you do all the hard work and all the things that have happened here? I'm fed up of it! Why do you always complain, Duncan? I'd like to know right now. You want to know why I complain? Duncan finally muttered. Do you know where I used to work before I came here? Not that I'm interested, no, said Peter Sam. I worked in a factory on the other railway, off Duncan. I hated it there. The workmen were idle and dishonest. Tools often went missing. The tracks weren't even repaired. And then there was Kane. He was their favourite engine. And yet, if he made a mistake, I got the blame. And if I tried to do things better, it was always Kane that got the praise. I'm so happy Mr. Percival brought me here, but it won't change what I experienced in that old factory. So there you go. Now you know why I complain. Feel free to have a go at me now. Peter Sam didn't know what to say. I'm really sorry about what you went through. Peter Sam whispered quietly. But we still have a dilemma of how we're going to get home. I can't move. You may not, but I still got steam, said Duncan confidently. He gave a sharp blast of his whistle and pushed with all his might. Before long, 
Duncan, Peter Sam, and all the trucks of leaves and broken branches were off the bridge and away to the top station without any trouble along the way. A few days later, Duncan was heading home light engine after a long day's work. At Proven's Gate, he met Rusty and Scar Lowy. Good evening, Duncan, said Scar Lowy. Busy day? Uh, yeah, thank you, replied Duncan meekly. Is there, um, anything you'd like to tell us? Rusty asked. Regarding Peter Sam? No, not at all, replied Duncan. I just helped him across the bridge when he broke down, that's all. You don't need to hide any secrets from us, said Scar Lowy with a wink. Peter Sam told us everything, and we're sorry. We had no idea you went through all that, said Rusty. Well, I don't want it repeated, not ever, said Duncan firmly. Of course, chuckled Scar Lowy. Now that we know what caused you to complain in the first place, said Rusty, are you going to stop? Are you kidding me? snapped Duncan. There's loads of things to complain about on this railway, but the twatter crossy curving keeps buckling in the summer beat, and I tell you what, the trucks get heavier and heavier when you take branches and leaves away, and because the handle's gone, we will have to carry all this work, and I tell you what, especially As since Duncan that... complained out of the station, Rusty and Scarlowy chuckled. Some things never change, said Scarlowy.